to Daily Spark TV. You know what I like to do on the show. I want to enlighten, inspire, and empower you to become your best self. Now, you know what we're going to do. We're going to get comfy. We're going to get cozy. We're going to get our coffee and our tea because we are about to get started. Today, we are talking about a children's book. Now, I absolutely love kids' books because it helps with their imagination. I am talking with Peter Locke today about his book, Mickey the Martian. I love it. But let me tell you a little bit more about Peter. He retired after 50 years as a television producer, director, and studio cameraman. He is the author of Mickey the Martian book series. He is currently the chief executive officer of Peter Locke International Limited. So let's get started. Hello, Peter. Thank you so Hi. much for spending time with me today. I love your t-shirt. Thank I you. I think it is amazing. I love it. Now, I want to talk to you definitely about your book, but before we do, I want to ask, what makes Peter Peter? Peter is Peter, uh, who has uh, a vivid imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, whether my parents had the vivid imagination when they conceived me, I don't know. But <laughs> there we are. Uh, and uh, I, as you say, I spent a long, long time in the television industry, mm -hmm. mainly as a studio cameraman. Uh, so I've been there, seen it, done it all over the world. Mm -hmm. I've covered wars, I've covered uh, riots, I've, I've covered everything there is mm -hmm. in the world of news, as well as doing programs that uh, in this country, oh yeah, uh, you might well have known, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it now, Monty Python, mm -hmm. I've worked on some Monty Python bits mm -hmm. and pieces in my time. Wow, so, that is amazing. I love how you said a little bit of everything, that it has been, you know, peace or riot, funny or or not, that, that you have been able to be a part of that. that that's amazing. Um, I think that... Um, the, the, the photojournalism, the reporter, the cameraman, the fact that you guys get to travel with the story and you bring it to us the way that you do, there, there's an art to that. So thanks for sharing those stories with us. I think, that's, I think that's a great thing. Now, being an author, is that something that you always wanted to do? Not particularly mm -hmm. uh, in the first instance to be an author. But when I was a very young boy, uh, the, te the teachers used to ask me to come out in front of the class and tell stories, uh, which I did. And they must have been OK because they had a beginning, a middle <laughs> and an end. Uh, and that was my first sort of imagination type mm -hmm. thing. Science fiction is more than just Star Trek and Star Wars. Can you tell us a little bit more about what makes the genre of science fiction, science fiction? I think the main thing about it is that an author can write about any subject they want to in this world and beyond, in time and space, without contradiction. Yeah. And that is something in my series of books. Of number six mm -hmm. is called... Uh, a Visit to Mars. Now, uh, the characters in the book, Mickey the Martian, and there are twins, Billy and Jilly Watson, mm -hmm. and the trio go on all these different adventures. Mm -hmm. Now, they go to Mars, and Mars is nothing like you might expect it to be. Mm -hmm. And it's full of surprises. I wouldn't say what they are, but uh, it's fun. It certainly isn't little green men living <laughs> underground. So I'm able to do that. I'm able to use my imagination in any way on any subject. And nobody can turn around and say to me, no, that, that's not right. In that, in that same vein, do you think that that's why science fiction is so important as a genre? Well, it's important uh, in as much as... Uh, it has brought about a great many of the things that we have today, and we take, for example. Uh, I mean, 
I know that uh, I was doing a television program in about 82, 83, when uh, emails had just come out. Mm -hmm. And it was for uh, British Telecom, which is a massive corporation in the UK. And they were talking about uh, new communications that they had got at the time, and really very pleased about this. And they bought on a guy from a place called the Henley Institute. Mm -hmm. And he spoke about what was going to happen 30 years hence, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. He said, a lot of the institutions that are about now will not be here. There will be uh, massive changes in the way that business is done. You will find that there will be a, a boy sitting in his bedroom making millions of pounds. And he said, all this is going to happen by about 2017. And we thought, wow. I mean, this was in, in the 80s, you know. But, and, and that's it. And uh, most corporations have a research and development section that looks up to 25 years ahead. Absolutely. And they, I mean, if you think uh, in the comics years ago, there was a, a two-way radio wristwatch, yes. you know, 50 years ago. And that was science fiction. Yeah. But now, you've not only just got the radio, you've got the visuals on it as <laughs> we well. We all sit here with our watches on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you, you really said something, because I remember growing up watching the Jetson cartoon and thinking, wow, are we really going to get there. And if we think about it, there are so many things, like you say, that are no longer science fiction. We do press some buttons and the food is warm. Uh, we are able to uh, get on those conveyor belts about the airport and get from one point to the next and so on and so forth. So that's true. We are, we are now living in the future and I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, it's time for us to take a very short break, but don't worry, we'll come back and continue this conversation. We'll be back after this. Hello, I'm Peter Locke, and I'm the author of these books, Mickey the Martian. Mickey comes down from Mars disguised as a young boy. This is because he can shape change. He can also teleport and mind control. On arriving at Earth, he meets eight-year-old twins, Billy and Jilly Watson. And with his Martian powers, they go on loads of adventures together. After arriving and finding accommodation, they chase a load of bank robbers and bring them to justice. They go to a fair where there's an escaped tiger, whom they capture and bring safely back to his cage. They go to a haunted house, where they meet a ghost and help him and solve a hundred-year-old murder mystery. They go to a castle, where there's the silly ghost of a king who plays tricks on all the visitors, and he shows them a secret room and a secret passage. They go to a television studio where there's a production being made about a Martian journey. And Billy gets to go and ride in a spaceship. Jilly meets her heartthrob. Afterwards, they say to Mickey, what did you think of that? Mickey says, it's a load of rubbish. It's nothing like Mars. So he takes them to Mars where they have a fantastic journey and really great time, and Mars is nothing like you might expect it to be. At Christmas time, the trio go to a pantomime, after which Mickey takes them to meet a real genie, and then they go to Father Christmas's grotto, and then Mickey takes them to meet the real Father Christmas. These are the books. You can find them on Amazon, or you can go to my website, mickeythemartian.com, uh, and you will be able to get the books from there. Thank you very much.
And welcome back to Daily Spark TV. Peter, I want to ask you, um, what are some of the ways, in your opinion, that people are introduced to science fiction? Well, I think that uh, if you take, say, a young child who is given a, a mobile phone, mm -hmm. uh, and then they find out that there are new phones coming on stream which have got different things on them, and they start to wonder what there is in the future. Yeah. So perhaps that's one way that, that uh, they, they get to know about science fiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you, you touched on 1.2 with the comic books, and, and nowadays with the comic cons and, and all that, you're, you're able to um, be more comfortable, I think. Um, there used to be a time where science fiction was kind of, oh, those guys. But now people realize I think those guys are onto something there, that their imaginations do allow them to be so creative, and we need that creativity. I, I love it. Now, are there any particular things that in order for a book or a movie um, to be considered science fiction, are there any things that must be included in order for it to be considered sci-fi? Yes, I, I think that... Uh Anything that at present is, appears to be absolutely impossible mm -hmm. would therefore be science fiction. Mm -hmm. And I have, in book three of my books, uh, which is The Ghost and the House, where the children and Mickey go and meet a ghost mm -hmm. and help him out. But not only that, the ghost is caught in this world and can't get back mm -hmm. to where he, he wants to go. And uh, the whatever you call the name of the person that would let him go across, I've called him the Grand Accountant. He Cute. could be any sort of a name. Yes, uh, I like that. But obviously the spirits can't talk to him and we certainly can't talk to him. Right. But in my book, mm -hmm. Mickey is able to talk to this Grand Accountant. Mm -hmm and help get the ghost to where he, to needs, where he to be. needs to be. So. Wow, that is so cute. I, I love that, I love that. And the imagination that it takes to think outside of the box, not just the traditional, once you're gone, you're gone, and that's it, you're there and we're here. I like that, I like that. Now, when you were developing your characters, did you find that you were basing them on any one in particular, or a little bit and piece from people that you knew? Or was it simply imagination took over and the creation is here? A lot of it was imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, if I, I took a character, I wanted to make all my characters quirky. So if I f found a character mm -hmm. and I thought, no, everybody does that, how can I make it different? Uh, which I, I did do uh, in nearly all of the characters that, that I've had. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, well, I wouldn't want to spoil it, but a character that I really changed is Father Christmas. Ah, okay. Like so, you said, I won't, I won't let you I spoil this, so yeah, I you have to buy that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things, uh, I have a friend who is uh, a showman, uh, and he had a hoop blast tool, but he cheated because he made the pegs in such a way that you could not get the hoop over the peg. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my second book, Tiger and the Fair, mm -hmm. they go to the fair and Mickey meets a showman who does this and he teaches him a lesson. Oh. So that comes from uh, my mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I remember the stories that people used to say that. It's like, oh, you don't play the games at the county fair because you just can't get it to yeah. go, that it's yeah. right. So good for, good for him that he's, yeah. able, <laughs> that he's able to fix that little bit. Now, so many times people, um, authors decide that a book is, is ready to go to press because it's a hot topic. It's something that people are on trend with. With your book, why did you feel that right now was the time for your series? 
Well, it was really because I'd retired and I wanted to do something. And uh, I thought I would try to write a book. Uh, who did I want to write for? I wanted to write for children. And then I thought it would take me hours and hours to research everything. But if I do it science fiction, pure imagination, then I can just write what I want. Mm -hmm. And then I hope that uh, other kids would uh, enjoy uh, the uh, characters that I, I created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're writing a children's book, do you have a certain age group in mind while you're writing or do you find that it's more important to get the story out and then figure out what age group is best for? Well I've written for basically 5 to 10 or 5 to 12 mm -hmm. uh, but lots of parents have said oh, I like that. <laughs> to say, I'd like to read that book mm -hmm. uh, but I, I've done it so that uh, the the children start off by having the story read to them. Yes. Then when they're started to read for themselves, the print is uh, quite large, yes. so okay. that it's easy to read. And I've put in a few bigger words, mm -hmm. so that if they don't understand the word, then they can ask the parents and learn, increase their vocabulary. You know, I think it's so mindful of authors who um, make the story also enjoyable for the parent, considering we will read that book over and over again. A, a good book is a good book, even if it's a kid's book that you're, that you're reading. Um, I have a few books that I remember my mother reading to me that I said, I love that book. I bought that book for my son because she made it so much fun as a little kid for me to read. So I can definitely understand that. Now, a last question for you, and that is this. Um, so many times we do the things that we do because of the various influences that we have in our life. My question is, how have you found that your faith has made you the person that you are today? Well, I was born Christian. And uh, I've spent my life with those Christian values and I hope that I have upheld them. But I've also learned that uh, to be true to myself and that if I believe in what I want to do, then anything is possible. Yeah. And that's how I hope this book will succeed. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Well, Peter Lack, thank you so much for spending time with me here today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for spending time with me as well. I hope that I have enlightened, inspired, and empowered you. Until next time, everyone, know that you are blessed in the Lord. Bye-bye.